Welcome back to Top Talk. I'm your host, Pace Webb. I'm so excited. I have Allie Brooke from Fifth Harmony in the studio with us today. Hi. Hello, everybody on the waves. She <laughs> is just this ball of energy. She Aww. walked in here. She's a big hugger. And I have a theory <laughs> about hugs. that. Yes, We're Texas girls. That's what it is. Texas girls all the way. You know we love to hug. We love to <laughs> hug. It's like, I don't even know you. Walk in here, big yeah, wide arms exactly. open. We hug anybody. Exactly. Everybody a needs a, a tree. hug. Yeah, the rock. <laughs> hugs, hugs are <laughs> hugs are good. Yeah, hugs are good. Always welcome. You have we have so much to talk about today. We do, girl. You know, I'm so and excited. Music is definitely my other passion than cooking, and awesome. I think cooking I is that. your other passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, other than exactly. music. So I think like there's flipped. a lot, a lot to talk about today. So, I mean, first of all, tell me about your. Your, your musical influences growing up. Ooh, oh my goodness. Well, growing up, I mean, my parents would play a variety of music, and I actually listened to a lot of oldies, like, you know, Motown from, like, Barry White to, of course, Michael Jackson. I know a lot of people kind of maybe won't know that, but yeah. I, I did too. My parents, so I grew up no listening way. to Barry White, and I'm like this teenager, yeah. you know, just kind of with the hormones, I'm like, ooh, this is really sexy. <laughs> like, what is yeah, this? Yeah, like, okay, his voice is so deep. Okay, Barry. But how good <laughs> is that music? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, I feel like it's so important for people to be educated on, you know, the classics and the foundation of music, and, you know, Motown is, is so amazing, and there's so much soul in it, you know what I mean? And um, I also was raised on a lot of jazz and pop, a lot of 80s pop, um, you know, Madonna, Cyndi Lauper, um, Amy Grant, you know, 90s. It just kind of ranges from everything. I love the Carpenters. My family would play the Carpenters a lot. That's where I get my influence from as well, from musical, I guess, from singing. Um, because she had such a flawless voice, Karen Carpenter, and um, a lot of, you know, Christian music, too, you know, going to church and, you know, listening to the radio, um, just everything, you know. What a, a lot. fun, fun <laughs> family. It sounds like. Yeah. So would you would you consider your parents to be uh, music aficionados like or more than average, mm. at least than the the average person? Um, yeah, I mean, they definitely love they love music and, you know, they they just love the feeling that they get when they listen to it, you know what they're I happy mean? Happy people. Yeah, yeah, happy people for sure. They're they're so cute. I love them. Hi, mom and dad. <laughs> so, what was it like? Okay, cooking now, growing yes. up, like how you know you're obviously on the show because we're gonna talk about mm-hmm. food. Oh yes, girl, one of my favorite subjects in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about what about cooking? Like, where do you come to this love and? A passion for cooking. Oh, I well, growing up, you know, I was born and raised in San Antonio, Texas, my 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 city, my state, Texas, and um, my family. You know, we're, we're Mexican Americans, so um, my family and I, or my family, would cook a lot. You know, my aunts and uncles, um, especially you know my grandma, especially my grandma and, and my aunts and my mom would cook a lot. You know, they would cook a lot of Mexican food, enchiladas, rice, beans. Um, we would always go to my family's house, you know, and every Sunday or Saturday and have a big get together and you know that there's always lots of food that they made themselves so that's where I got the passion and my mom always would cook at home she would cook amazing amazing meals and my dad would cook too but he would cook more breakfast like that's like some of the best breakfast you'll ever have so that's kind of where I get my love for cooking is um from my family but it's mainly baking and that started when I was about 12 years old and my mom like I grew up with her um, baking in the kitchen so I would always you know come home after like what was she uh, baking? elementary school um usually a lot of like cookies cakes like chocolate sheet cake a lot of that when I was younger a lot of pumpkin like she loves the fall and that's why I get my love for that too so fall baking I mean everything like pumpkin bread you know pumpkin pie and um, my dad also loves to bake like we always bake um, during the holidays um, so that's where I get my love. You know, it's kind of them too infused in me. <laughs> I feel like dads are are like the breakfast. The, they're the right? breakfast side of the family. Yes, that's what definitely. my dad does too. It's like when I go home, I sleep. Like I yeah. sleep. Oh, me too. Girl. When I go home, so my dad's up at like five thirty in the morning, and he's oh, got wow. all the like breakfast mise en place out. But he's just like that's waiting awesome. for me. He's already had like his yogurt and granola because he can't. It's like lunchtime for him by the time I get up, uh-huh. and he's like he, his thing is dirty eggs. So we'll take this cast Ooh. iron skillet that's been around in our family forever, oh my gosh. and make the bacon in it, and then mm. take the bacon out, pour a little bit of the grease out, the grease, and, all yep. that, and then put the eggs in. Oh my god! And cook gosh. the eggs in the bacon grease, and then make the pancakes and everything. And it's wow. just like. It's just like 
glorious. It's where it's at. Oh, that's amazing. What kind of, so is your dad cooking Mexican breakfast kind of stuff? Yeah, he likes a lot of um, breakfast tacos. Like he even makes sometimes the tortillas himself, like literally from no. scratch. Yeah, he has, um, I think, I have to ask him, but I'm pretty sure, you know, it's the flour and the salt, masa, I think. Lard, that, yeah. Oh, lard, sorry, not lard, masa, lard. Yeah. <laughs> lard, oh my gosh, they're the best you'll ever have. Um, a lot of breakfast tacos, eggs, like potato and eggs, bacon and eggs, um, beans. It's just all oh, so amazing. Like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> so you like to uh, you like to have a big breakfast, I, I read. Do. Yes. And like nobody ever <laughs> says that. I'm like, I wonder really? if it's because we're Texas girls. Probably. Or what, but it's like I'm like ready to just <laughs> devour. Just devour every yes. I want like one of everything, oh, me a lot too. of variety. Uh, me but then too. I'm good for like the rest of the day. Yeah, you're like, oh, I wish I was the and same. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I just want to eat all day. But breakfast is the most important meal of the day, of course. And I mean, oh, I'm trying to watch it, you know, I'm trying to watch my figure, trying to eat a little, you know, <laughs> lighter, more clean, but I cannot deny myself a good breakfast every once in a well, while. Well, they say it's actually good for you to have a, a more full breakfast rather yeah. than like a tiny little breakfast. It gets yeah. your metabolism going. For sure. For sure. It's all about eating the right things. But yes. I mean, pancakes, bacon, <laughs> eggs, tacos, um, French toast, all that. I would just eat <laughs> right now if I could. But she's still, guys, she's still still tiny you oh. can't see her right now Thanks. but she's really keeping it together i don't know I, where she's putting all the food that's what my uh, boyfriend says he eats oh. so slow and i eat so he calls me I pac-man eat so fast. I eat so fast. he's like right? how i mean i this baby this burrito that was the size of like mm. a small fetus oh. and i was just like rum, 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 rum. yeah and he looked over he was like halfway down he's literally twice my size and he's what? like I, wait, I don't understand <laughs> you're like what and you're like how Hi. i i don't i don't even know yeah you look amazing yourself i'm trying to watch it so i've been working out more the new year yeah so thank I mean, you for I'm that, never gonna stop eating but yeah you know exactly no so never. we just have to hit the gym a little more that's what it is and yeah. that's fine of course because that feels good too it does yeah get your sweat on and you know eat something good so <laughs> what is it like though know, eating on the road I can't imagine that's easy at <laughs> all no it's not okay well for okay there's two sides of it one it's it's not easy eating healthy because for me I'm like I'm in Chicago. I have to go to Giordano's, which is one of my favorite mm, restaurants in the country because it has the best d- deep dish pizza. Oh. I love a Chicago classic. So I'm like, Chicago, please get me that. When we're in the South, I want Waffle House. You know, the, the fans know that I'm obsessed with Waffle House. Obsessed. Like I was on a road trip with uh, my dad as a young girl and I, I would get so overly excited every time we saw a Waffle House. He'd it's... be like, he'd be like swerving on the road. Like, what? <laughs> what? I'd be like, oh, Waffle House! Yes! Like, That's he's like, me! You did it 15 times already. Like, calm like, down. Calm down. You're like, no, I mean, I just love Waffle House. I mean, I always get the same thing. Bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich on Texas toast, side of crispy hash browns, and I'm good. Like, I'm literally crying when I eat it. <laughs> like, I want to eat with you. You sound like so much fun to eat with. Oh, well, thanks. I, I hope I'm fun. I just, I just love the other, food. Do the other girls like to eat, or are yeah. they more, like, health conscious? No, we, we love yes. to grub, which is awesome. <laughs> we need more of that in our society totally. for, for women, yeah, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you know what? Enjoying it's... food and, and recreating the body image. Yeah, and... exactly. Like, you know, the thing that I love about being in this group is, you know, we we come from different backgrounds we're multicultural and you know we're all different shapes and sizes which is being celebrated you know what I mean I think that is so important especially for our generation to know that like hey you can be yourself and you can still follow your dreams you know what I mean you don't have to fit a certain mold of course take care of yourself take care of your body but don't put so much immense pressure on yourself you know what I mean because you're unique and you're beautiful the way you are and that's what our message is that's what we want to um share with our fans that's such a beautiful message from young women yeah who are, who are really living it and I know a lot of people are looking up to you especially oh. the younger ones who are you know I, you. I remember being a teenager and being very very concerned with body image and Me weight too. you know yeah. and it was just like man this is this is very adult and it's sort of it's not very fun no. but you want to look good but it, what, you're eating like a piece of lettuce yeah you no, know it's, it's just like yeah and like, we have to get rid of that of course and like you know, for me, it's like I want for myself to have a certain goal for my body. And, you know, that's totally fine. You know, if I want to reach that and I want to continue to work out, like, that's fine. And, you know, if some people like I still want to be able to be happy while doing it. You yes. know what I mean? Of course, like 
um, getting in better shape is always tough. It's always a challenge. Yes. But kind of don't deprive yourself. Yes. You know what I mean? Just it. take care of yourself. That's yeah. kind of the balance. You know what I mean? And like I said earlier, don't put so much pressure on It'll yourself. show in your personality too and yeah. the way you glow and smile. Yeah, exactly. And so many young women don't realize that it's it's your personality that makes you sexy and attractive. Yes, not exactly. really. No, it's not really your body. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's so important to kind of spread that message to, to everybody, to people you know, of all ages and, and shapes and sizes and to learn to just embrace who you are and you know, whatever your goal is for yourself, you can get yes. there. You know what I mean? And but everybody's goal is different. Everybody's way to that goal is different as well. But just kind to be happy. That. Yeah, and, and be embrace happy. Embrace along who the you way. Are, for sure. I think that's so such a, an awesome message. It really is. <laughs> it makes me very happy that that's being promoted oh, yay. by these Good. fabulous young women. Oh, it, <laughs> that when you're not on the road. Okay, so you said eating on the road has two sides. Oh, yes. Right, okay. okay. Two sides. One is, you know, the side of you're everywhere and this is my favorite side <laughs> you're everywhere and you get to go across the country and you get to go experience all the different food foods food in each mm-hmm. in each state and um that's so exciting but also it's hard too because i'm like wait a second i gotta make sure i fit in my costume <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like it's so hard because when you want to eat clean it's a challenge but also you know you treat yourself every once in a while too because you're like i don't know when i'm gonna come back you know, so right. it's all and about finding a balance. Are you able to exercise on the road? Yeah, you yeah, to. you have to for sure. I mean, it's kind of up to us and our schedule can be pretty crazy. Of course, it's always crazy, but usually on tour, it's pretty um, constant. Like it doesn't change a lot. So it's, you know, this is what it'll be like for the next month or two months, three months, whatever. So you kind of find time like, oh, on your day off, work out. For sure. Or, you know, before glams, which is before hair and makeup and everything, you um, work out, too. So it's kind of up to you. And also the dancing helps, too. Cause we, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we're always up there, you know, doing our choreography and, you know, jumping up and down, having so much fun with our fans, which is great. So that helps, too, to be able to burn some of that food off. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, now what about when you're at home? What kind of food do you like to make at home? Oh, what are you eating at home? I love to bake. So, of course, desserts are my favorite thing to make. Um, I love cookies, cakes, um, you know, pies, bars. It really, it's just a variety of different things I love to make. But also what I love to eat is San Antonio has the best Tex-Mex around. Like, For sure. No, I can't argue that. Oh my gosh. It's phenomenal. So I love to go to, you know, the different Mexican restaurants and Eat there like um, Las Palapas, Mama Margie's. I love. There's this um, place that's my favorite. It's called Blanco Cafe. Okay. Or, yeah, and that has the best tacos. Like go in there and order anything, and it will be amazing. Your taste buds will thank you for it. <laughs> and my other favorite restaurant in San Antonio is called Mexican Manhattan, which is right by the Riverwalk, and their enchiladas. Oh. I'm yeah. like just dreaming about them as we speak, and my mouth's watering. <laughs> They're incredible. Um, and I also love, I mean, it's just, it's, there's nothing like my grandma's homemade food or my aunt's, you know, homemade Mexican food. It's, yeah, we always have get togethers when I'm back home or, you know, regardless, but, you know, of course, when I get back home, we always have a celebration too. So eating that food is the best. Oh my gosh. Yes. Well, I, I, it sounds like you're very active, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying. <laughs> Well, I wanted to um, get a a little bit into sort of sharing your story with everybody. Um, And we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, uh, we're going to learn a lot more about you, that she's not just this energetic, sweet, beautiful woman. She's much, much more. Yes. Thank you. Welcome back to Top Talk. I'm your host, Pace Webb. Really enjoying my afternoon with Allie oh, Brooke. Yay! I'm enjoying my afternoon with you, so thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, you know, people see someone like you, young, successful, uh, talented, and they're like, oh, well, damn, she just got discovered on this show, and uh, <laughs> now she's successful at 22, um, and they maybe are a little bit jealous or a little bit like, wow, luck is just, I guess that's just luck. Um, you have kind of an interesting story, a, mm-hmm. a remarkable story that really paints the picture that success comes from many, many struggles, starting oh, with your yeah. birth story. Yeah, exactly. I mean... You know, it's funny because a lot of people, yeah, they they do see that. And obviously, I'm 
I'm so thankful to be at where I am, but there is a story behind it. You know what I mean? And um, so when I was born, I was born actually a premature baby. So I was born one pound, 14 ounces. So I was really, really, really tiny, very fragile. And um, I was so tiny that I could fit into my dad's palm. So he would just carry me in his palm. And so, you know, at birth I was kind of struggling and it was obviously a challenge. And um, I was born about three months early and it was crazy and it was scary for you know my family of course because they you know didn't know what would happen and um, you know the doctor though he came out and he told my parents two things he said hey you have two things going for you know she's premature but one she's a girl and girls do better than boys and two interesting yeah yeah it's crazy and two she came out screaming (laughs) and they're like her lungs should not have been developed you know so that was kind of like a little miracle and so my parents were just like wow you know they were flabbergasted I guess and um you know through that I had to be on an incubator I think that's yeah an incubator and um you know my parents had to stay with me in the hospital for yeah I think a was a few weeks and you know through it all of course it was worrisome to my parents you know it was definitely a struggle and um but at the same time it was kind of interesting too because in a funny way you know they kind of had peace in their hearts and so obviously you know I came out you know fine um I'm now obviously here I am today, you know, I'm very, very fine and (laughs) full of life. Oh, thank you. I'm so grateful for that because I easily could not have survived. And I know my parents are so thankful, my family for sure. But it was a struggle. It was scary. And, um, you know, through that, through my experience, through my family's experience, I really I've always had in my heart like I want to be able to help people like me and help people like my family, people who are struggling, you know, people who are going through the same thing my my parents went through and you know it's hard you know knowing that your your child may or may not make it like that's that's devastating so through this platform and through you know everything that's kind of happened to the group and I I've always kind of said I've, I'm I really want to be able to help people through my experience through the platform whatever it is that I that I get so I partnered with March of Dimes um, to be able to help other families and and babies like like me through um, premature birth, you know, I'm actually getting ready to, I think this week, hopefully visit the babies in the NICU, which is the um, neonatal intensive care unit. And, um, you know, I'm also able to bring awareness through, you know, my social sites and to our fans, kind of get them more educated on what it is. And um, the organization is amazing because they do so much for the families. And I'm so thankful to be a part of it, to be able to help these people. And give back to something that is so important to you. It's so fulfilling. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing like it. You know what I mean? And I, there's so many people struggling in this world. And, you know, obviously through my platform, I'm able to be, to help them, which is amazing. You know, would you say, obviously you maybe don't consciously remember this experience, but would you say there is some sort of like a fighter in you from this experience that you use now? (laughs) Yeah. Yes. There definitely is a fighter in me. You know, obviously I have been fighting since birth. (laughs) And when did you start actually, when were you singing? Were you always singing at home for fun? Yeah, I was, I was always singing at home, always singing in the car. My family has little videotapes of me (laughs) being in the house singing all over, singing at chapel, in chapel. And um, I started performing when I was about 12, no, sorry, when I was about nine years old. And I was really shy, like very, very shy when I was younger. So my parents um, put me in this organization back at home to help me get over that. But And also they had heard from my teachers that, hey, your daughter can really sing. Like she has a beautiful voice. So they put me in this organization. And ever since I was nine years old, I started performing around San Antonio and also around Texas. And I just fell in love with it. Like I fell in love with the stage and I felt like I could be myself on there, but also a different person, too, because when I was younger, I was very shy. I could not know, imagine that timid. now with your personality is so <laughs> Thanks. outgoing. Thanks. It's so funny because to me, like, it's funny because now I'm a lot more, oh, so much more comfortable in my skin. Of course, I have, you know, like everybody those days where I'm, you know, I feel insecure, or, you know, whatever. But 
it's funny thinking how far I've come because I used to be so shy. I mean, I would cry before I would sing in front of people. Oh, bless your you heart. You know, I, I would and I, I would be, you know, self-conscious and, you know, just normal feelings, you know. At that age. <laughs> so that's really, we're looking at 11 years. You had your first break when you were 20. Yeah. Is that about okay. right? Yeah, about like, I auditioned when I was 18. Mm-hmm. And then the live show started when I was 19. So yeah, literally, I had to learn how to be an adult so quickly. Because I auditioned for X Factor when I was 18. You know, made it, made it with the group. That was crazy because... From the auditions, I went to boot camp, which was like a week of, I mean, literal boot camp, you know, kind of just high stress situations of, you know, being put in different stages of the competition before you went to the live shows. We, I got eliminated, you know, my, my heart was broken. I thought my dreams were over. And then I got uh, called back to the stage, you know, with four four of the girls, which are now, you know, part of the group that I'm in. And, you know, they told us you're going on together as a group and that was just like a complete revival for me you know and then I had to learn to be an adult so quickly you know I could not have my parents there because I was legally 18 you know I was, I was an illegal adult um, and you know the other girls had their parents and that was a struggle for me you know because I had to learn to really depend on me I was the only one who was there for myself you know besides having my parents to call and yeah. everything, but you know, they, the girls had their parents and that was hard for me. You know, I had to make decisions on my own and I had to learn what that and hope that they're like. the right ones. Right. And how do you bounce yes. off of somebody who, you know, has your back and mm-hmm, exactly. And it was, it was so challenging. I had to learn a lot so quickly and I grew up so quickly, but you were, I think, you know, what the, the big thing to share with people and make sure that they realize is that you were at this for a good 10 years mm-hmm. before you had any kind of break. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. You know, it's not like this is, this is not an overnight. This is years in the making. Yeah, absolutely. You know, cause I did start when I was nine and then I went to California when I was 12. I recorded with different producers from that time, um, 12 but that to didn't, like 18. And, but that didn't lead you to, to stardom, really, right? So it's like well, you don't want to yeah. give up yeah, exactly. just because your first couple of shots didn't make you yeah, an ex- overnight success. Exactly. You know, And also, I'm really thankful for that time because I learned so much. I learned a lot about recording. I got a lot of experience in the studio. I got a lot of experience with networking. And, you know, even <laughs> back then, you know, with like the photo shoots I did do, like it all added up and it all did really help me because I became educated on the business. And then what I learned and the knowledge that I had gained from that, you know, those years of just kind of hustling and struggling. Yes. And, um, going through a lot. I took that and took that experience with me to the X Factor and to today. Probably makes you feel a lot more prepared for it, too. Yeah, for sure. Because it can be totally overwhelming, I'm Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, absolutely. And my parents, I mean, they have helped me so much. They've really educated me. And, you know, they're still helping today, you know. And they're they're very involved in in the process. And they're there to support me and help me. You know, if I'm like, Mom and Dad, I'm kind of stuck on this. What do you think? You know, I, I make my own decisions and I'm, you know, independent. But I also trust them. I do the same thing still. You know, I'm 30. I'm going to be 34 years old. I still (laughs) with any big decision. That's what you should do. You contact the people that you trust. You know, they have your back. Exactly. And see what they say. Mm -hmm. And my parents have have always had my back. I'm just so grateful to have them in my life, to have their support, you know, to have them push me and, and just to have them love me, you know, and guide me through everything. Not everyone has that. You know, we're really, really lucky. Absolutely. So blessed. All right. Speaking of <laughs> love and support, oh. <laughs> Valentine's Day is around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you going to be cooking for anybody special? Well, actually, I am. I am going to be cooking for some special girls. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I well, I, yeah. I plan to to bake them something. Hopefully, we're all together on the same day. I I don't know if that's a day off yet or not. Hopefully, I'll have enough time. But as of now. I do plan on and baking what, them something sweet. Okay, what, what what are you what are you thinking? You would like to bake to just knock their socks off? Ooh, I want to bake a chocolate molten cake. Oh god! I have this recipe that is amazing. It's actually pretty pretty easy. Anyone can do it if they just follow it. It's not too complicated. 
And is the recipe online anywhere? It's in a cookbook. Okay, which yeah. cookbook is it in? Do you remember? Ugh, I forgot the name of the cookbook, but it's... Um, I tweet it, maybe be... tweet it later or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, I can tweet so it. So that we can make this dessert. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's amazing. It's one of my favorites of all time. And it's so good. I mean, it's it's just the right amount of chocolate and sweetness. And um, you put that... You put ice cream on it, vanilla ice cream, when it's hot, and it's like... Oh my gosh, you just, <laughs> I'm up in a tear, I'm just thinking about it. It's like, your body is just like, it She's doesn't a, have to do. You, you get emotional like me when something's really good. You're yeah. just like, nobody speak to me right now. Nobody speak to me, yeah. <laughs> Having an experience. Yeah, totally. Okay, let's say you had a boo for Valentine's Day. What would mm-hmm. be your idea of a the perfect <laughs> romantic day? Well, whatever he would want to take me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's see. My ideal, right, right, right now we're in L.A., so um, let's, j- I think a nice, I love Italian food, and I'm a sucker for a good Italian dinner date, um, but I think something like, I'm such a romantic, I love the beach, I love going to the movies, I love just going to the park, um, just spending time with that person. Um, would be my ideal and whatever. That's the I right would answer. Honestly, yeah. Spending time with that person. Exactly. Yeah, I don't need anything but just the time with you and I just want, yeah, I just want to be with that person and I mean, of course, like I'd love to go on a nice dinner date but I mean, just being with them would be so special oh, for me. You're down to earth too. We like yeah. that. We like that. <laughs> well, thanks, boo. All right, I want to talk about What's next for you? You just got nominated for a Kids Choice Award. Yeah, I just heard about that. That's so awesome. Amazing. Yeah. You guys have a VMA under your belt. Yeah, that's insane. I still can't believe that. I, I sometimes think about that day and I'm like, wow. Like that was definitely one of the best days of my life. Except for <laughs> maybe if you win a Grammy sometime. Oh my God. That yeah, would the be Grammys like... are coming up. Oh my gosh. That would be absolutely just flooring. Like, Is that I a point know. where you'd feel like, like, I have I have made it in some degree. <laughs> yeah. I have made it. Oh my gosh! Of course. I mean, the Grammys are everything, you know, and that's the most prestigious award you can get in music. And to have that kind of honor of having one in our name would be just unbelievable. You know, that's our dream because we we've talked about it before. We're like, guys, what if we win a Grammy one day? Like that's absolutely our dream. Just like probably any other oh, yeah. musician's dream. Well, let's oh, talk about dream. how how you're going to get there. I want to talk about this <laughs> album you're recording. Yes. Um 5H2, which is what it's a hashtag that our fans and us kind of created. Of or course. I think it's our fans created. 5H2 to get yeah. all excited. <laughs> yeah, the fans are awesome. They're they're waiting and I'm I'm waiting too. <laughs> um we have been working so hard on this album. Um it's a change for us. It's definitely a step up. You know, Fifth Harmony is a different Fifth Harmony today and our music has definitely evolved just like we have as people. And we're so excited to share this with the world. I mean, I already know the game plan for everything, but I can't say it. But I know our fans are going to just flip. Um, and I'm flipping as I just think about it right now. I'm like, ah, but it's going to be awesome. And I hope everybody loves it. And we've worked hard. So are you guys doing writing? Are you writing together? Doing any writing? We, no, we didn't write on this album, but we worked with so many amazing writers like Julia Michaels, Justin Tranter, um, Stargate, um, MXM, you know, their their team. Uh, we've worked with a lot of pretty phenomenal people. How would you say this album is going to set you apart? How are you evolving in this album? Ooh, definitely the sound is is different. You know, sonically, it's a step up. I it's I love about this album that it kind of it does have a pretty consistent lane, but it's it also has variety, which is awesome. Mm. And we are more vulnerable on this album as far as what we speak about, what we talk about. And we have matured a lot on this album as well. And I think that's going to really shine through it. And I hope that people will like it. Like, that's just my my goal and my hope. Well, if it's relatable, and, if you're speaking from the heart, mm-hmm. I think that's what people really respond to. Yeah, for sure. And I know... You know, as of now, I do know some of the songs that are going to be on there, and we're deciding the other songs, but as of now, you know, it does seem like 
I don't know. I'm just so excited. It, it seems really great. <laughs> what about collaborations? Who can we expect to see <gasps> yes. from collaborations? Well, I can tell you or I can wait. And I think I might just wait. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm no. just kidding. Uh, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I do know collaborations. We definitely have those. I know our fans have been asking us too. And it's so dope. I mean, I think that's just what I want to the adjective I want to use <laughs> is dope. Like, I just can't wait to see the reaction. I mean, we're honored to work with these people for sure. So it's going to be to be crazy. Like, it's so I'm just excited because this album is a step up. It's so versatile, you know, and um, it's fun. It's very it's very us. So far. <laughs> I cannot wait. Hashtag 5H2. Yeah. Yes, um, go. Where, okay, so where do you want to go in the food space? You know, we've touched on mm. your love of baking, your passion for that. I You're love obviously it. very relatable with people. Oh, thanks. So, <laughs> where, what are you thinking for that? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I love, of course, I have a passion for it. Um, I love to bake and I want to see where that kind of takes me. I mean, I would love to hopefully. My one of my dreams is to collaborate with one of my favorite chefs, which is Giada De La Rentis. Oh um, yes, I love her, and I went to her restaurant um, she for would my love birthday. You. She oh, would love you. I would die. I haven't met her yet, and I would okay. die to meet her because I just love her and respect her. We'll try to hook that up. Oh please, I would die. Except I, <clears throat> I'll be cool in front of her. <laughs> but I mean, that would be amazing. I would also love to. Who knows? I mean, maybe write a book on my experiences and kind of a, a fusion of of obviously the recipes but the emotions and the stories behind them. I think that's so much more interesting for a cookbook anyway. Yeah, yeah, to kind of, you know, because it's one thing to put them out, but to have stories behind it, say like, oh, I remember when I ate this during Christmas, you know, this memory reminds me of the day that yes. I, you know, got this or whatever. I was able to, you know, buy my mom this or whatever. And I think it's really important to share your story. And I think that's so fun, you know, to share a piece of you with the people you love. So I think that would be amazing. And to kind of see where else it takes me, I want to learn more. I would love to take some classes um, to just kind of expand my knowledge and really see where the road takes me. I just I have a passion for it. and I want to get better at it. You have the perfect attitude for life. Oh, thanks. <laughs> we will read anything you put out just well, to get thanks. a piece of your lovely, <laughs> lovely spirit. Thanks, girl. I've just been through so much. I'm like, just see where everything takes you, you know, learn from your experiences and, you know, share it with the people you love, you know, share what you want with with those who it helps us all it helps us all <laughs> to hear each other's stories yeah for and sure <laughs> a cool fun fact uh, we are very sparkly in the studio today <gasps> we are yes look so at you. you've got your glitter my, gold nails yes I'm obsessed my toes are always <laughs> so, uh, always glitter gold I love her that her phone is glitter my gold phone, and yes. my shoes are hey. Nike glacial blue <laughs> hue high heel crazy high tops I love so it I think that we have to take a picture of this we totally do um, yes glitter girls but uh, glitter for real girls. I'll kidding aside all mm. glitter aside this has been really fun oh, and you're awesome and I can't thanks. wait to just see you soar oh thank you so much you're awesome and I, I loved being here your energy is amazing and I, I hope we can do it again thank you <laughs>